This presentation is on internet pornography and erectile dysfunction. To really understand porn addiction, I suggest watching my six-part series, Your Brain on Porn. Before I go any further, I want to point out that we are for free speech and free will, don't want to ban porn, and don't care what anyone does with their genitals. My wife and I have another site on relationships. It has nothing to do with porn. However, several articles on the neuroscience of orgasm and love are there, including other articles on evolution and sexuality and addiction. We also have a forum that discusses topics on sexuality. Uh, about five years ago, with Google's help, porn users began showing up, telling their stories, blogging, and sharing. Years later, our forum is populated with porn users in various stages of recovery. We have learned a lot about porn addiction and porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Here's a typical quote from a heavy porn user. I'm in my late 30s, have been using porn heavily since my teens, and I have had ED problems for a long time, at least since my late 20s though it's only recently that it's become almost total copulatory ED. I've blamed it on the attractiveness of my partners, on the newness of my partners, on my fitness levels, my diet, my age, stress, performance anxiety, lots of things. But when I realized I could no longer even masturbate to orgasm without porn, something clicked. It seems blindingly obvious now, of course. Now, this is very common for heavy porn users in that they often don't see that the cause of their ED is porn related. Here's another typical quote. We could fill up a book with them. I am 24 years old and have been battling ED for years now and only recently attributed it to porn addiction. I tell you what, I have been on an emotional roller coaster while trying to figure out what the problem was. What makes the whole thing so difficult is that you know that you should be aroused by real women, but for some reason you can't. Then you try consciously to make yourself aroused, which is basically impossible, and once this fails, you spiral into depression and anxiety. Physicians really need to be more aware of what is going on with this. It's something, you know, on our forum we have seen teenagers with erectile dysfunction. This is not normal, let me tell you. Sure, guys in their teens and 20s can have occasional anxiety, but not chronic impotence, unless, of course, they have a serious medical condition. It's very clear their ED was caused by heavy porn use, because when they stopped and stayed off porn, their erections and desire returned. With continued heavy porn use, the brain can change. Here are a few ways that the ED can manifest. Number one, no spontaneous erections. Guys really love it when their morning wood comes screaming back. Number two, not aroused by static porn. Really, it's not aroused by any previous porn. In fact, guys often need to escalate to more extreme porn to even get aroused. Unfortunately, that's a sign of addiction. Number three, decreased penile sensitivity. This indicates that your brain is actually less sensitive. Number four, delayed ejaculation or the inability to have an orgasm with real partners. In fact, men are now faking orgasms with their sexual partners. That's very interesting. Number five, copulatory impotence, the inability to maintain an erection with a real life sexual partner. This is a major complaint we hear about. Number six, ED drugs are losing their effect. Why? Because the problem is in the brain, not the penis. And number seven, eventually can't get it up even with extreme porn use. If it is a growing problem, then why do we hear so little about internet porn causing erectile dysfunction? Well, there are many reasons. One obvious reason is that fast connections with free streaming internet porn is a relatively new phenomenon. Now that endless variety of extreme porn has been in place for a while, we are seeing guys who started at 12 coming down with impotence by age 
15, 16, 17. Number two, it may take some time for the ED to develop, perhaps years. Although time frames are highly variable, ED may suddenly appear. More importantly, users may not notice ED because to keep their erection, they have escalated to longer use and more extreme flavors of porn. This is not a value judgment on any type of porn. It's what is extreme to the users, which differs person to person. Number three, men don't talk to each other about it. No guy wants to admit he has ED. Also, guys don't make the connection. We humans are often blind to cause and effect, especially if we don't want to see it. I want to point out that the omnipresence of Viagra and other ED drugs has created this consciousness that chronic ED is normal. ED is supposed to be very rare under the age of 40 and unheard of in the teens and 20s. Well, until recently, that is. Number four, healthcare providers may be unaware of how today's internet porn with its constant novelty and endless variety can affect the brain. It is quite a fast moving phenomenon. See, good advice depends on being up to date on the latest neuroscience. To understand how internet porn can affect the brain, you have to know that excessive gambling, food, video games can cause brain changes that mimic drug addiction. So it's clear that masturbating to the internet porn can be a whole lot more stimulating than those other things. Also, historically, there has been a paradigm. If you have a problem like erectile dysfunction, it was caused by guilt or shame. No way. If that was the case, ED would show it up immediately in porn users. Part of the reason healthcare professionals are in the dark is that no research has been published on porn and erectile dysfunction. There's been just a few studies on internet porn in the last five years, and they were basically just questionnaires. No brain studies yet to truly assess the effects of porn on users have occurred. Studies are not, the problem is growing. Here's a great book, The Brain That Changes Itself. It's on brain plasticity or rewiring of the brain. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list. The author is a psychiatrist and he's treated heavy porn users. He is clear on two things. Number one, porn addiction is real with structural changes occurring in the brain. Number two, porn viewing can cause erectile dysfunction. Here's a little bit from his book. During the mid to late 1990s, when internet porn was growing rapidly and pornography was exploding on it, I treated or assessed a number of men who all had essentially the same story. They reported increasing difficulty in being turned on by their actual sexual partners, spouses or girlfriends, though they still considered them objectively attractive. When I asked if this phenomenon had any relationship to viewing pornography, they answered that initially it helped them get more excited during sex, but over time had the opposite effect. Now, instead of using their senses to enjoy being in bed, in the present, with their partners, lovemaking increasingly required them to fantasize that they were part of a porn script. Now this was in the late 1990s. What has happened in the last 10 to 15 years? This headline says it all. Young men, couples shunning sex. Look at that. 36% of teenage boys are not interested in sex. Are you kidding me? In my dinosaur days of the late 60s and early 70s, a teenage guy who was not interested in sex, he was sent to the psychiatrist. It's well known that porn is huge in Japan. They are tech savvy and sexual repression really isn't a problem. Notice it has doubled in two years. Isn't that amazing? These men have no interest in sex with real women because they are no longer stimulating enough. They just can't compete with internet porn. A 2008 French study found that 20% of the young men there are not interested in sex. The French, you know something's wrong. Here is the medical definition of erectile dysfunction. 
consistent inability to obtain and or maintain an erection sufficient for satisfactory sexual relations. Getting statistics on how many people have it is hard. If you look at the Kinsey 1948 studies, the famous ones, he found that for 20 and under, ages 20 and under, less than 1% had it. Under 45, 3% had it. And many of these cases were probably related to performance anxiety. The thing to get is that ED is not a disease of healthy young men, at least not until recently. Let's look at the causes of impotence or erectile dysfunction. Opinions have dramatically changed over time. Up until the 1970s, it was thought that 90% of co the causes of ED were psychological, and only 10% were organic or biological. One of the primary psychological causes was frigid wives. Yes, it was blamed on the women. Today, psychological factors such as stress, anxiety, guilt, or even the fear of sexual failure make up about 10% of the causes. They call those psychological. Whereas today, it is considered that ED is caused by organic problems, 90%. Some of the biggest players in organic problems are blocked arteries, nerve problems, diabetes, alcoholism, and of course, something called aging. If you're under 40, it is rare to have an organic cause, but of course, it's always good to get checked by a doctor. As we can see, it can take a significant time for science to catch up with reality. Okay, let's time travel through history of ED. In the 1960s, the cause of ED was, of course, psychological, neurosis of the man or maybe his partner, then in the 1990s, things switched. They switched to organic when researchers saw that drugs work, like Viagra. Of course, discovering Viagra was accidental. It was being tested for high blood pressure, and some men noticed an improvement in getting and maintaining erections. Again, science is lagging behind, and it's behind on internet porn because no one wants to study it. If the erectile dysfunction is porn-related, then the cause goes back to the brain, but back to organic, yes, a physical cause. Porn-induced ED is not psychological, but an addictive process that it has altered the brain, the structure and functioning of the brain centers that control erections. Your problem isn't in your penis, it's in your brain and it can heal. Let's look at erections.